Good afternoon, children. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. I got the Max workbook, ma'am. Very good. Very good. Say a good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've shared my screen, children. Visible to all of you. Oh, we are discussing the answers. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma Very good. Ma now. Open your uh, tuition classwork notebook and uh, as we discuss the answers, self uh, self evaluate your answers. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you, uh, you can use a pencil to do that. Yes, you can use a pencil to do that. You can give yourself one mark if it is correct. No yes, mark if it is incorrect. It's OK just to know. Yes, uh, yeah, so you don't take the marks too seriously. Mom and also. Oh, you gave because like last, because as you people were doing, you told me that uh, not most of it, but yeah, about 40% of the questions, I think most of you uh, found it new, right? So don't worry about what you score. Anyways, we're going to discuss now and learn everything. Okay, so give yourself one mark if your answer is right. No marks if it's incorrect. Yes, ma'am. And yeah. also you gave two worksheets for homework in the workbook. Uh, I did the first one and not completed the second one. No, workbook answers we are not discussing today because I told you, no, I'll push the due date. So that we'll discuss next week. And also the four questions homework you gave before. Yeah, we'll discuss. Uh, today we'll discuss uh, the answers to uh, the practice test questions, which uh, you all had taken up yesterday, and also the answers of the homework question of the class before yesterday's class. Okay, so we'll see them now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> one minute. So this one, children. Keep your books ready. Yeah. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So look at this one. Uh, the first image here represents the shaded region represents two by four. Plus. You can see the plus sign here plus. This one represents the second figure represents one by four. One out of four is shaded. What is two by four? See, this is two by four. This one, this one is two by four plus this one is one by four. So what is two by four plus one by four? It's three, three by three, four. Three by four. Three by four. Okay, so three by four. Two by four plus one by four is three by four. But we don't see this answer and you can see the final figure is three by four is equal to is equal to you can see the final figure is equal to three by four. But that answer three by four, we don't find it here among the options A, B, C or D. We don't find three by four. But what's the other way of writing three by four? Mm -hmm. Three by four can also be written as three into one by four. Yes, or if you dis that. disable your mic, if you have a doubt, you can ask me. You don't have to acknowledge if you understand. If you have a doubt, please ask me. So kindly disable your mic. Ma'am, you have to put one mark only, no ma'am? Yeah, one if it is correct. So the answer is three by four. The first figure represents uh, two by four plus the second one is one by four is equal to three by four. We don't find this among the options, but this can be written as three into one by four. So the correct option is B. No, I have three, some bad voices. I'll just disconnect and reconnect again. Yeah. So here the first one is one by four plus the second one is also one by four. The third one is also one by four is equal to you can see the final image uh, which is three by four. So again, which is three into one by four, three by four is three into one by four, three into one by four. So the correct option is B. Correct option. One by four plus one by four plus one by four is equal to three by four. 
which is 3 into 1 by 4. Because 3 into 1 is 3. Multiply the numerators. 3 into 1, 3 by 4. Mom, you skipped question number two. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, Santosh, I'll just check for some time. Otherwise, I'll disable your mic, Santosh. Are you concentrating? No, ma. <laughs> no, yes, then, ma. How, then how do you have the doubt? Uh, if that we no, missed the second one. I didn't one. see the question number, ma'am. No, no, that means you were not they alert. They both got the same answer and I didn't forgot to see the question number. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> so here we cannot simplify. Uh, you cannot take up a number from the numerator and denominator and simplify them using a common factor. So you have to directly multiply the numerator. So you get 52 by 25. So the correct option is B. Correct option B. Please ask me if you have a doubt. Please unmute and ask me if you have a doubt. If you are right, you don't have to acknowledge. You don't have to unmute and acknowledge. But if you have a doubt, Please ask me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be sharing uh, all these answer images. So don't, uh, you know, like bother to write or something now. Just understand. I'll share, I'll share all these images. Now, 3 into 2 by 3. Which of these represents 3 into 2 by 3? So 3 into 2 by 3 means 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3. Right? Repeated addition is multiplication. Repeated addition is multiplication. So 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 is 3 times 2 by 3. See, like 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 3 times 4. Repeated addition is multiplication. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 3 times 4. In the same way, in the same way, 3 into 2 by 3, 3 times 2 by 3 is nothing but 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3. So this is the correct option. 2 by 3, you can see here. 2 by 3, 1, 2, 3. Two, uh, two parts shaded out of three parts. 1, 2, 3. Two parts shaded out of three parts. 1, 2, 3. Two parts shaded out of three parts. So the correct option is B. B is the correct option. 3 into 2 by 3. 3 times 2 by 3. 3 times 2 by 3. So that's nothing but 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3. Which is represented by the circles in the second option, option B. If you're right, put a tick and give yourself one mark. If it's incorrect, since these are MCQs, you can, uh, you know, cross, put a cross against your answer and tick the correct answer using a pencil. Six into one by seven. Six into one by seven. See, uh, you have to, you know, interpret the question based on the options you have here. Based on the options you have here, you will have to interpret the question. So, if you look at the uh, third one, if you look at the third one, that is option C. Uh, this one, how many parts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. Since there are seven parts here, see, uh, I'm not checking 
option A, B or D first. I'm directly uh, uh, checking on option C because we have one by seven. I'm not saying that only will be the correct option. No, you have to try the most what you feel will be the most appropriate first because we have six into one by seven. The denominator is seven. We'll choose that option or we'll try that option which in which the whole is divided into seven equal parts. Because the denominator is seven. So in option C, we can see that uh, the whole is divided into seven equal parts here also. So we'll just see if this can be the uh, correct option. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK, now the first uh, figure represents three by seven. Three parts shaded out of seven parts. The second one also three by seven because three parts shaded out of seven parts. Now three by seven plus three by seven is equal to three plus three by seven, which is six by seven and six by seven is six into one by seven. Six by seven is six into one by seven and you can see the answer. Six parts are shaded one, two, three, four, five, six in the answer. Can you see the equal to sign? This first one, the first figure represents three by seven. Plus uh, the second figure also represents three by seven. Now the answer figure is equal to the answer figure should represent six by seven because three by seven plus three by seven is three plus three by seven, which is six by seven. So the answer figure should represent six by seven and it is six by seven. And what is six by seven? Six by seven can be interpreted as six into one by seven. Six into one by seven because six into one is six by seven. So C is the correct option. Option C. This is three by seven plus. This is three by seven plus this is three by seven is equal to <coughs> this one is six by seven, which can be inter and the six into one by seven is nothing but six by seven. So C is the correct option. The product of 11 by 13 and 4. So 4 is nothing but 4 by 1. 4 by 1. Uh, we multiply the numerators by multiply the denominators. Simplification is not possible. So we find the product of the numerators. Sorry, the product of the numbers in the numerator. So 44 by the product of the numbers in the denominator. 13. Now we need to write this as a mixed fraction. So 13, 3s are 39, 3s are 39, 5 is a remainder by 30. So option A. Option A. Which of the following represents one third of one sixth? One by three of one by six. We we know that the off operator stands for multiplication. The off operator stands for multiplication. So one by three of one by six means one by three into one by six. And that is in option C. We have this answer in option C. 
Of operator stands for multiplication. So 1 by 3 of 1 by 6 means 1 by 3 into 1 by 6. Is uh, 2014 a leap year? Yeah, I want answers from you. Is 2014 mm -hmm. a leap year? No, no ma'am. Yes, ma no, ma 365 no, days only there. Yeah, because 2014 <laughs> is not divisible by four. See, this, the number, the, the year should be divisible by four. Or you can take the last two digits, 14. 14 is not divisible by four. 14 is not divisible, not exactly. When we say not divisible, not exactly divisible. OK. 14 is not. Take the last two digits of the year and divide by four. If it's exactly divisible, it's a leap year. If it's, well, a, if it's a centurial year, it should also be divisible by 400. If it's a centurial year like um, uh, 1800, 1900, 2000, 2100. If it's a, if the year is a multiple of 100, if it's a centurial year, if the year is a multiple of 100, then such years should be divisible by 400 also. Only then it's a leap year. Uh, with the uh, 365 only so yeah you're okay. right yes two 200 uh, sorry 2014 is not a leap year so that means it has 365 days if it is a leap year then it has 366 days so you're right you should divide by 365 you're right 2014 take the last two digits take the last two digits okay the last two digits uh, are not exactly divisible by 4. Which means 2014 is not a leap year, not a leap year. Which means it has 365 days. You can divide the last two digits of the year by 4 and check if it's a leap year or not. But if it is a centurial year, you must check if it is divisible by 400. Only if it's divisible by 400, it, it, it's a leap year. Otherwise, no. OK, so 2014 is not a leap year. Therefore, it has 365 days. Now, the pocket elements per day will be pocket Allowance for the year for what you can say for 365 days. For 365 days is equal to 3832.5. So pocket allowance. For one day, one day will be you'll have to divide. For 365 days, it's given. So for one day, you'll have to divide is equal to 3832.5 divided by 365. Now let's see how to divide. Let's see how to divide. Very simple. Listen carefully. Now first shift the decimal point. Shift the decimal point. So see here 3832. Write the number without the decimal point. OK, so it's this one. This is the number without the decimal point. 38325. Now you have increased the number, right? By removing the decimal point, you have increased the value of the number. By removing the decimal point, you have increased the value of the number because the number was actually 3832 by 0.5. OK, but by removing the decimal point, you have increased its value to 38,325. So if you increase, you should divide. If you increase the value, divide by 10,000. And so on. 
approve you have to uh, you have to decide if it is 10 100 that i'll tell you that's the next thing i'll tell you that if you decrease the value of the number supposing you decrease the value of the number then you should multiply by 10 100000 just give opposite effects if you by by moving the decimal point by moving the decimal point if you reduce the value of the number then you should multiply by moving the decimal point if you increase the value of the number then divide if you reduce the value of the number multiply if you increase the value of the number then divide so here you have increased so give the opposite effect increase or divide decrease multiply if you decrease the value multiply if you increase the value then divide so here we have increased 30 uh, sorry 3832 becomes 38325 you have increased no? so divide divide by one followed by the decimal point you shift by one place no? so 10 you the decimal point you have shifted by one place when you push it once to the right you have removed the decimal point so only one zero now supposing the number was 2.225 then it will be write the number without the decimal point write the number without the decimal point this is the number without the decimal point it was 2 point something and you have increased it to 2225 you have increased the value so divide divide by what one followed by how many zeros to add by how many places did you shift the decimal 1 2 3 3 places so three zeros now tell me what is uh, 1.15 equal to as a fraction 1.15 is equal to you should first write the number without the decimal point this is the number without the decimal point and you should divide by what 10 100000 what's the number 100 100 you should divide by 100 very good now supposing the number is um, 0.005 now what is the number without yeah what is the number without the decimal no first we'll write the numerator what is this number without the decimal point 0005 that's nothing but 5 0005 which is nothing but 5 so 5 is a numerator by now 1000 yeah 1 2 3 you shift the decimal point to the right by three places so three zeros three places or three zeros but don't put only zeros one followed by three zeros okay so when you increase the value of the number divide by one followed by 1 2 3 4 zeros depending on upon how many decimal places you shift so now this becomes uh, 38325 divided by 10 now this is divided by 365 right so it becomes into 1 by 365 see you know all this it's just that you are applying it in a word problem you've been doing this the numerical question was given straight away and that's what you've been doing all the while now the same thing is given in a situation as a word problem that's all it is <clears throat> so first write this decimal number as a fraction write this decimal number as a fraction now this division becomes multiplication and you need to write the reciprocal of the second uh, number that is the number after the division symbol so division becomes multiplication and 365 becomes its reciprocal 365 is 365 by 1 so it becomes 1 by 365 anyone has a doubt here please ask me now no ma'am okay now how do we multiply fractions multiply the numerators 3 8 3 2 into 1 divided by multiply the denominators 10 into 365 now we'll have to simplify <clears throat> so let's take uh, 365 and uh, 
uh, this number. Now, instead of dividing by 5, 5, 5, first let me try if it is directly divisible by 365. You can do that. So just try if that number is directly divisible by 365. If it is not, then we'll uh, do it by 5 and then proceed like that. So 365, 1's are uh, 365. It's a remainder. Uh, this is 8 and this is 1 and 2 comes down. It's not possible to divide. So we add a 0 and then bring the 5 down. 2 comes down. It's 182. Not possible to divide. Right? So we add a 0 and bring the next number down. 1825. It ends with 5. So I'm going to try 365 into 5. Okay. I'm going to try 365 into 5 because it ends with 5. No. And yes. It's 182. See, this may not always happen, children. I'm saying just try. Just try. So here in this case, it's exactly divisible. So 365 ones are 365 one not five times. Now we have one not five. See, you can cancel. If you want, you can simplify 10 and uh, 105. Otherwise, what you can do, you can just, uh, you know, without canceling, you can do this. What is that? Now, 105 by 10. So how will you place a decimal point? Isn't it? Mom, point I mean, a decimal point, point after the 10. Correct. Well, if you understand this, you can directly write this 10.5. You can also yes. cancel. See, even if you cancel, you'll get the same thing. See, 105 by 10. If you cancel 5 2s are 521 times. Then divide 21 by 2, you'll get 10.5. See, if you feel 105 and 10 are further divisible by 5, you can simplify. See, 105 by 10 divide by 5, so you get 21 by 2. And when you divide 21 by 2, the quotient will be 10.5. So you can do it both the ways. But whenever we have 10, 100, 1000 as a denominator, don't simplify, meaning don't cancel. You can directly write the answer by shifting the by moving the decimal point in the numerator. Remember this. We have 101 by 10, though 100 and sorry, we have 105 by 10, though 105 and 10 have a common factor of 5. We choose not to divide because the denominator is 10, right? So straight away we can uh, get the final answer by moving the decimal point or by placing the decimal point appropriately. Also option B, right? Sorry? Option B, right? Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, option B. So option B is the correct option. The number of pieces is equal to 330 divided by 13.2. How many pieces of 13.2 centimeters can be cut from 330 centimeter long rod? So like supposing you have uh, a rod which is uh, 20 centimeters long and you want to make small pieces of 2 centimeters each. You have a 20 centimeter long rod and you want to make small pieces of two centimeters each. So how many pieces will you get children? 10. 10. 10. How, how 10? Because 20 by 2. You'll have to divide. You'll have to divide 20 by 2, 10 pieces you can make. From this 20 centimeter long rod, you can make 10 pieces of two centimeters each. So the same thing here, you'll have to divide 330 divided by 13.2. So it is 330 divided by, now first write 13.2, this decimal number as a fraction. Tell me 13.2 as a fraction. 132 by 10. By 10, very good. So let's do one in every step. 
don't apply more than one rule in one step. First, let's change. Now, don't change division to multiplication and take the reciprocal. Don't do that. Don't change division to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second number. Don't do that. First, convert this decimal number to a fraction. So 13.2 should be written as 132 by 10. So see here, 330 divided by, we retain the division symbol, divided by 13.2 is equal to 132 by 10. Now, 330, 330 means 330 by 1. If you want, you can write a 1. Division becomes multiplication and write the reciprocal of the second fraction, 10 by 132. Now, multiply the numerators, 330 into 10 by multiply the denominators. Now, take a number from the numerator, a number from the denominator and simplify using a common factor. So I think both of them are divisible by 6. OK, so 6, 6 twos are 12. You can do it. Uh, you can divide by 2, then by 3, and so on. <clears throat> so 6 twos are 12. 1 remains, 6 twos are 12. Uh, 6 fives are 30. 3 remains, 6 fives are 30. So it's again divisible by 11. 11, 11 twos are 22. 11 fives are 55. You know, children, take one number from the numerator, one number from the denominator, and simplify these two numbers using a common factor of the two numbers. Now, two ones are, two fives are. So we are left with five into five in the numerator and one into one in the denominator. So five into five, 25. And one into one is one, which is 25. So you can make 25 pieces. Number of pieces, 25. Any questions, children? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Okay. Five by 12th part of what amount will be equal to 3, 3 by 4 part of rupees 1000, sorry, 100. So let's first find 3, 3 by 4 part of 100. We'll find 3, 3 by 4 part of 100. Okay. So 3, 3 by 4 part of 100. Of 100 is equal to 3, 3 by 4. Of means into 100. Of means multiplication into 100. 3, 3 by 4 part of 100 means 3, 3 by 4 into 100. Now change this mixed fraction to its improper form. form. So it's 15 by 4 into 100. So now multiply the new 100 means 100 by 1. Multiply the numerators divided by multiply the denominators. Now 4 ones are 425 times. Now 15 into 25 is 375 divided by 1 into 1, which is 1, so which is 375. Now you have to find 5 by 12 part of what is 375. See. 5, 12 by part of what amount will be equal to, we found this one, no? What is 3, 3 by 4 part of 100? We found the answer is 375. 3, 3 by 4 part of 100 is 375. We just found that. We just found the answer. Now read the question like this. 5, 5 by 12 part of what amount is equal to 375? Because the value of this one is 375. We just found. 3, 3 by 4 part of 100 is 375. So replace this one with 375. Will be equal to means equal to symbol, equal to. So now read 5 by 12 part of what amount? Of what amount means question mark? We don't know. 5, 12 by, uh, 5, sorry, 5 by 12 part of what amount? So that's what I've written here. 5 by 12 part of what amount? So question mark is equal to 375.
So now let's take a situation using whole numbers. Now, if I if I ask you uh, three by four into what? Okay, one minute. If we have a situation like this, yeah. Um, Sam, yes. should we should we divide the um, part of amount? Uh, they are asking like uh, the multiplication answer. So we should divide, right? Correct. We should divide. So if you have four, see, off means multiplication. Supposing you have four into what is uh, 36. How will you get this answer? 36 by four. See, we have a situation like that uh, involving a fraction. 5 by 12, part of what is 375? Off means into. Off means into, right? So next step will be 5 by 12 into what is 375? So if you have a situation like this, 4 into what is 36? So 4 into 9 is 36. And how do you get the answer 9? 36 by 4. 36 by 4. So here you take that part of what as x. Take this as x. 5, 12 by 5, oh, sorry, 5 by 12 part of what amount of x is equal to 375. What amount? No, so let's take it as x. So 5 by 12 part of x is 375. So 5 by 12 off means into x is equal to 375. So to find x, we have to divide 375 divided by 5 by 12. Because that's what we do, no? 4 into x is equal to 36. How will you get the value of x? 4 into what is 36? 4 into 9 is 36. How do you get this answer 9? 36 divided by 4. x will be equal to 36 divided by 4. Same thing here, 375 divided by 5 by 12. So x will be equal to 375 into 12 by 5. Division in uh, becomes multiplication and reciprocal of the second fraction. Multiply the numerators, 375 into 12 by 1 into 5. Simplify, 5 ones are. 5, 7 are 35, 2 remains 5, 5 are 25. Now 75 into 12, 75 into 10 is 750, 750 plus 150, so 900, X is 900, so rupees 900. Option A. See, you need to practice this sum. You know, uh, two, three times. Then the okay. Idea will be registered. Otherwise, every time you see this uh, question, if you, uh, you know, like don't practice and you see the same question after 10 days, you might not be able to recall as to how to do it. So today, whatever we discuss, you know, in this session, tomorrow, at least by to before tomorrow, it will be very good if you can do it after the session today. Or at least by, to uh, you know, by the end of the day. If not, at least by tomorrow. Otherwise, it will fade from your memory. You'll forget. You need to practice. Only then you can retain this new concept. Yes. Anything new you learn, you can you can understand. See, in the session when I teach you, you can understand. But all that you understand, you cannot always remember. That is different. Understanding is not equal to remembering it forever. No, to remember you have to practice. You will have to visit the question. Regularly, like re revise it now today or by tomorrow. Then again, next week sometime you should open the book and go through the same thing. So tomorrow, if today or tomorrow, if you take 20 minutes for this, when you revise next week, you will just take uh, five to 10 minutes. And again, see the same questions after another 10 days. So you will just flip and you will finish it so fast. So only when you visit the same thing a couple of times, it's registered in your memory. Retention happens only when you visit 
what you have understood a few times. Do the same thing today. Revise this again after 10 days. See it again after 10 days. But every time you do, the amount of time you take to finish this, you know, will keep reducing. You take half an hour today. Next week for revision, maybe 20, 15 to 20 minutes. And then again, after a couple of days, when you have to revise this, 5 10 minutes, you'll finish it. And then, yeah, you will be able to retain it. <clears throat> you don't have to again revise it for your exam. So repetition is very, very important. Yeah, I'll get the answers from you. Uh, the reciprocal of 2 by 7 is? 7 by 2. 7 by 2. 3 by 4 of 27. How do we work this? We have to multiply. Correct. So 3 by yes, 4 no. into off means into 27. So this is nothing but 3 into 27 by 4. You can also write 27 as 27 by 1. <clears throat> now you cannot cancel. Simplification is not possible. So multiply 27 into 3, 81, 81 by 4. And you can write because it's fill in the blanks. Uh, see if it's a, if you have options to select, then you can see if you have 81 by 4, you can select that option. But since it's fill in the blanks, write this as a mixed fraction. It will be 21 by 4. 21 by 4. Mom, should I give my yeah. chance mark? Because I only wrote 18, 81 by 4. I didn't write 20. No, no, no. It's correct. You can give yourself one mark. Yes. 4 into 6, 1 by 3 is equal to 4 into 19 by 3. So that is 4 into 19 by 3. Again, simplification is not possible. 19, 4 is a 76 by 3, mixed fraction, 35, oh, not 35, sorry. 35 by 3. No, 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 not 35. 3 twos are 6, no? no 3 twos are 6. Yeah. 2 are 6, 1 remains 5, 1 by 3. Fourth one. Half of, of means multiplication. 4, 2 by 7. So it will be 1 by 2 into, write this as an improper fraction, 30 by 7. 30 by 7. Now multiply the numerators. 1 into 30 by 2 into 7. You can simplify 2 ones are 2 fives are. So 1 into 5, 5, 5 by 7. The answer is 5 by 7. Fifth yes, one. Very good. Um, yeah. I'm having a. Um, is it uh, like. It's... Mom, we have to put it in the mixer form now, ma'am. That one, fourth one. Oh, it's a proper fraction, right? Yes, ma'am. It's a proper fraction. Correct. Um, is it uh, 2 into 15, right? 2 into 15 is 30, right? Oh, have I gone wrong somewhere? One second, let yeah. me check. Which one are you talking about, uh, Tanya? Both one, both one simply, simplification. One by two into 28, 30 by seven. One into 30 oh, actually, by... Actually, I got the answer oh. as two, one by seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have the answer as two, one by seven, ma'am. Two, yeah, one by seven. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Two, yeah, one by... that's two. why I thought we have to put it on mixer form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have gone wrong. Yes. Two ones are two fifteen times. So it's fifteen by seven, which is 
So two two by three into seven by nine is equal to. And is there any tidy for the third one? Sorry. Is there any tidy for the third one in the fill in the blank? Okay. Yeah. Again, simplification is not possible. Eight seven the fifty six over twenty seven as a mixed fraction. As a mixed fraction, twenty-seven twos are fifty-four. Two by twenty-seven. Is this right? Yeah. Let me know if I'm right, children. Mom, I think so. I gone wrong somewhere. Okay. Let's do it again. Two two by three. Two two by three. As an improper fraction is eight by three into seven by nine. See, we should not take reciprocal simply. Only if we have, if only if it is division, we change that to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second fraction. If it's multiplication, we write the second fraction as it is. Have you gone wrong there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I have copied the question wrong. So I got the answer. Instead of two, two by three, uh, Pranava. Yeah, I'm same. Mom, instead of two, two by three, I wrote two, three by seven. Oh, have I? Two, three by seven. No, no, I don't know. I'm scared now. Did I uh, type it incorrectly? The question. Let me just check. Yes. You see, if I've gone wrong in preparing the question. Yes, ma'am. The question. Oh yeah, the question is two, three by seven into seven by nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, while typing, I've gone wrong. No, I put zero marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually two, uh, three by seven. That's why I was wondering why nobody has got the answer I have got. So I realized I have gone wrong somewhere. Okay, the question in the book is two, three by seven children. So let me correct the question and write the correct answer. The question is two, three by seven. That's why uh, my answer did not match with yours. Seven here. So two, two, one, three, three by, by seven. seven. One minute. Two, three by seven. It is. So two, three by seven into seven by nine is equal to seven twos are fourteen. Fourteen plus three, seventeen. Seventeen by seven into seven by nine. So multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. Seven and seven cancels out. Seventeen by nine as a mixed fraction will be one eight by nine. Am I right now, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Mom, I didn't do it in mixed fraction. Is it fine? Oh, you didn't do? No, no, no. Always convert uh, improper fractions to mixed fractions. Supposing okay. uh, this was an MCQ, then if among the options you have seventeen by nine, you have to choose that. Yes. Yeah. If the option is seventeen by nine, you'll have to choose it. Otherwise, mom, yes, mom, uh, I also the options. Very mom, good. Can I get Otherwise, you always have to con. No, no, you can give yourself full marks. Otherwise, you'll have to always convert improper fractions to their mixed form. Yes. Yeah. Then the sixth one, I'll do it um, here. Four by five 
divided by 4 is equal to write 4 by 5 as it is. Division becomes multiplication and 4 is 4 by 1. So it's reciprocal is 1 by 4. Write the first fraction as it is. Division becomes multiplication and the, the number after the division symbol 4 which is 4 by 1 becomes 1 by 4. It's reciprocal. Now it's a multiplication uh, situation. Multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. 4 and 4 cancels out. So the answer is 1 by 5. Got this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, children. 1 by 5 divided by 5 by 6 is equal to 1 by 5 dash 6 by 5. Multiply. Yeah. Fine. Correct. 25.4 because Division becomes multiplication and you'll have to write the reciprocal of 5 by 6, which is 6 by 5. So in the dash, we have the multiplication operation. In the dash, you just have to put the multiplication symbol. OK, now how do we multiply 25.4 by 1000? So multiply as if there is no decimal point. Multiply as if there is no decimal point. 25.4 treated as 254. Multiplied by 1000, which is 254 followed by three zeros. Now, after the decimal point, there is one digit. So place a decimal point here. After the decimal point, one digit. But we know that the zeros in the extreme right of the decimal point have no value. So it's nothing but 250, sorry, 254 followed by two zeros. I'll tell you again. So I wrote the answer and I striked it out and uh, wrote the wrong answer. Okay. See here. 25.4 into 1000. Okay. So what you have to do is 1000 is fine. 25 In 25.4, we have the decimal point. Right? In 25.4, we have the decimal point. Write the number without the decimal point. Write the number without the decimal point. So 254 into 1000. And find this product. Now, now the question 25.4 into 1000. The question 25.4 into 1000 will be write the same answer you got. Write this answer. Now here in this number, after the decimal point, there is one digit. So in the product, place the decimal point so that there is one digit after it. So the decimal point should be placed here. But this is nothing but two, five, four, two zeros. Point zero, you don't have to write because we know that the zero to the extreme right of the decimal point has no value. So this is the product. 25,400 is the product. In the first step, you should write the numbers without the decimal point and find their product. In the next step, write the given question. Whatever question is given, write the answer you got here and place the decimal point. That's all. Eight point four divided by 
what is 22.1? 8.4 divided by what is 2.1? So take a situation like this. Uh, 40 divided by what is 10? 40 divided by what is 10 children? 4. 4, ma'am. How did you get this answer for? You should divide by 10. 40 by 10. By dividing 40 by 10. So here you will have to divide 8.4 divided by 2.4. In order to understand if we have to multiply or divide, you take a similar situation but using whole numbers or say natural numbers, using natural numbers. So when you use natural numbers for the same situation, you will be able to decide which operation to use. So same situation we took for, so or you can take say 35 divided by what is 7. So we know 35 divided by 5 is 7. Now how to get this number 5? 35 divided by 7. So do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. You need to. So 8.4, one second, divided by, we don't know this, x is equal to 2.1. So to find this number x, to find this number x, x is equal to 8.4 divided by 2.1. See, the steps are very important, children. You need to practice this two, three times. You mark now those uh, answers which you can understand, but finding it slightly difficult, like, you know, mark such answers and you practice the same two, three times. Then it will become easy for you. When you hear something new for the first time, it will always sound difficult. But when you practice it, the same thing which was difficult will become easy. So presenting the steps is definitely new to you. So you need to practice them. So X is equal to 8.4 divided by 2.1. Write it like this using the division symbol. Now see here, X is equal to what is 8.4? 84 by 10. Am I right, children? What is yes, 8.4? 84 by 10 divided by what is 2.1? 21 by 10. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, let me write it here one second. Here for the ninth one, 8.4 divided by X is equal to 2.1. So X is equal to 8.4 divided by 2.1. X is equal to 8.4 is 84 by 10. Divided by 2.1 is 21 by 10. Now X is equal to 84 by 10. Division becomes multiplication. And write the reciprocal of the second fraction. 10 by 21. Now you will have to multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. 10 ones are 10 ones are. 20 in 21 tables itself, 21 ones are 21 fours are 84. Otherwise, you can simplify using the tables of 3 and then 7 or 7 and then 3. I've done using a 21 directly, so 21 ones are 21 fours are. So x is equal to 4 because 4 into 1, 4, 1 into 1, 1, 4 by 1, which is 4. So in this dash, we have 4. Now you will say, I guessed it easily, ma'am, by so many steps. For the simple answer, you're giving us so many steps. See, if, if the numbers are large, then you cannot guess, no? Then you need the steps to get the answer. So it is important to learn the steps. Now you might have guessed 8.4 divided by what is 2.14. Good. But if the numbers are large, if both the numbers in the question are large, you cannot guess. And if the answer also is a fraction, if the value of x is 13 by 17, how can you guess that? Supposing you work and the answer for x is 13 by 17, something like that. How can you guess that answer? So then you need to know how to present using steps. 
So you have to practice the steps. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes what we do, no? We don't practice. So next time in the test, when I give a question like this, you will say, you might say, I don't, I didn't understand. No, no. See, if you didn't understand, you would ask me now, no. If you didn't understand, you would have asked, you should ask me now. In the test, yes. if you don't work it correctly, and then if you give me this excuse that I did not understand, I can't take it because if you didn't understand, you should have asked me now. So if the same question is given in the test and you're not able to do it correctly, the reason is not you did not understand. The reason is you understood, but you did not practice. And hence you forgot how to do the steps. That's the reason. Because you're not going to spare me. You know, if I have not explained it correctly, you're not going to leave me. Now you'll, you'll definitely ask me. At least one of you will ask me that, no, no, what you're saying is not clear. Do it again. You should ask. You should ask. That's why we are here. <clears throat> so now if you nod your head, now if you acknowledge that you have understood, you should be able to do this in the test. If you do it, that means you have practiced, you understood and you practiced what you understood and hence uh, you were able to retain. If you don't do it correctly, it means you understood, but you failed to practice, you did not practice and so you forgot. And that is the reason why you were not able to do the same sum correctly in the test. Next one. Don't worry, I've shared all the images, children. Yes, the tenth one. Forty two point four seven divided by X is equal. You can take Y also. You can take it as Y. Divided by Y is equal to zero point four two four seven. So we know y is equal to y is equal to <clears throat> you can again 40 divided by y is equal to uh, say 20. What's the answer for y? 40 divided by y is 20. What's the value of y? 40 divided by what is 20? Ma'am, 40, divi 40 divided by two. 2 is 20. Two. Yeah, 40, 40 divided by 2 is 20. Now, how to get this answer 2 using 40 and 20? You should divide 40 by 20. 40 divided by 20. So here, what will you write? See, very simple. What you have to do is you should write a similar situation using natural numbers. So see, we have created a different question. 40 divided by y is 20. So here, how will you find the value of y? You know the answer is 2. How to get that number 2? y is equal to 40 divided by 20. So y is equal to 2. So what did you do? You divided this number by this number. Do the same thing here. y is equal to 42.47 divided by 0 0.4247. y is equal to this number like 40 divided by 20. So here 42.47 divided by 0 0.4247. Now, how to continue? Very important. See here, y is equal to. Write this as a fraction. Tell me, Santosh, what is 42.47 as a fraction? Ma'am, 42.47 as a fraction will be as uh, 40, 0, yo. 42 and 40. No, no, no. Yo, it's collapsing, ma'am. So only Santosh will answer. Others, if you keep your answer ready with you. Nobody should answer unless asked. Okay. 
part for 42 and uh, 0. Point, 0. Point, uh, Satakshi. Satakshi, what is 42.47 as a fraction? Ma'am, 4,249 by 100. 4,249 by 100. 47 by 100. 45 by 100. 500. Correct. Correct. Divided by Satakshi. Tell me the second decimal number as a fraction. Is she there in the meeting? Yes, you're there. Okay, Deepthi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 4,247 by one three zeros. One three by how many zeros? Four zeros, four zeros. So this is the next step. Then y is equal to, write the first fraction as it is. Write the first fraction as it is. Division becomes multiplication. Write the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now, y is equal to multiply the numerators. Multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. So they get cancelled, no? This one and this one, they get cancelled. y is equal to y is equal to you can cancel the zeros do you know that you can cancel the zeros in the numerator and denominator one zero in the denominator one zero in the numerator one zero in the denominator one zero in the numerator so y is equal to 100 see after cancelling we are just left with 100 in the numerator Others are all 1. So y is equal to 100. Very important. Please practice. When you work it once or twice, it's going to become so easy for you. So without practice, you will make simple ones also very difficult for you. With practice, Everything easy, difficult. No, everything mama, I know easy. the answer, but uh, in that uh, suddenly you call me and I uh, forgot that my answer. So now I was telling the class, I was not telling you in particular. I'm saying in general, we need to practice. Okay. Okay, answer this question, uh, Santosh. Write this number as a fraction. Fraction. Uh, how many uh, uh, two decimal for now? Number one, number ten. Uh, ma'am, two or uh, two thousand. Uh, uh -huh, sorry, two one 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 five by ten. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So I ah, just. Hey, Yes, you, yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, okay. I'll just work this again so that uh, you can hear it again and it looks easier. 42.47 divided by y is equal to 0 0.4247. So y is equal to 42.47 divided by 0 0.4247 so we know we have to divide yeah we know we have to divide now how to proceed with the calculation y is equal to write the decimal numbers as fractions 
So 42.47 as a fraction is 4247 by? By? 100. By? 100. 100. Divided by? Tell me the second one, Santosh. Ma'am, the second one is 4247 by 1000. 1000? Yeah. Uh, ah, 10, 4, 4, ah, 10, 000. 4, 4, 0 should be there after 1. Okay. So, y is equal to, That's right? right? No, ma'am. You are not, you, you are right, you are right, here. Yeah. Second time you were right. First you said three zeros, then four zeros. Four zeros is correct. Now write the first fraction as it is. Division becomes multiplication. Take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. Cancels. Two zeros, two zeros, y is equal to 100. Mm, Okay. Next. 1, 1 by 4 divided by 3 by 5 into 2 by 7 is equal to. Now, first let's convert 1, 1 by 4 uh, to an improper fraction. So that's 5 by 4. 5 by 4. And uh, what is the rule of Godmas? Division first and then multiplication. But whichever comes first from the left. First division, then multiplication. But whichever comes first from the left, if multi if from the left multiplication Mom, comes. I first, think you are mute. No, no. Others can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Pranava. Yes, ma'am. I also can hear you. Uh, Satakshi, please sir, leave the meeting and join. I audible to you? Mom, I couldn't hear you. No, leave the meeting. Rejoin. Mom, put it on chat for her. She cannot hear you now. Mom, she left. Okay. My audible now, Satakshi? Yes, ma'am. Now okay. we are all. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, mm, I've said yes. So, uh, by the rule of Bodmas, division first and then multiplication. But from the left, if multiplication comes first and then division, you should multiply. You should perform the multiplication and then division. So here we have division. So we'll do that. So division becomes multiplication and reciprocal. 3 by 5 becomes 5 by 3 into 2 by 7. Now multiply the numerators. 
Multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. Two ones are two twos are. So this is twenty five, right? Twenty five by forty two. Did you get this? Twenty five by forty two. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, ma yeah. we can't get this. I have to go back. Ma'am, I'm not in the second second step. So can you repeat it? You want me to repeat the explanation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Ma'am, I left it like that because you can't reduce it. Mom, I left it like that because we can't reduce it. Yeah, right. Correct. You cannot reduce it any further. Twenty-five by forty-two. Yes, Pranava, we'll do it again. Okay, ma'am. Tell me one one by four in its improper form. What is five by four? Now. we have two operations here we have division and multiplication we have division and we have multiplication so which one to do first by the rule of bodmes we need to do division and then multiplication and from the left what do you have first from the left you have division only so we'll have to do that first okay ma'am yeah so division becomes multiplication and 3 by 5 Becomes a reciprocal five by three, and then this two by seven as it is into two by seven as it is. Okay, ma'am. Now, now it's Easy multiplication together. everywhere. Now it's multiplication everywhere. So multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Okay, ma'am. Now simplify. Take two from the numerator. Take four from the denominator. And Reduce it. Okay, ma'am. Now further simplification is not possible. So multiply the numbers remaining in the numerator, and multiply okay. the numbers remaining in the denominator. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Ravi ate two seventh part of a cake, while his brother ate four fifth of the remaining part of the cake. See, like, um, say there is a toffee divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now, if a person eats half of this. That means five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Half of this. So five is eaten by one person. If the other person eats one half of the remainder, supposing another person eats half of the remainder. Half of the remainder means how much is remaining? This one remains. These pieces remain, and half of this. That means. There are five pieces here, so two and a half. Half of the remainder, the remaining pieces. There are five pieces, and half of that will be two and a half. So we need to take yes. care when it is. Yeah, we need to take care when it is something of the remaining part. Ravi ate two seventh part of a cake, while his brother ate four fifth of the remaining part of the cake. You need to find what is left. So see the steps. Now how much Ravi ate? Ravi's portion is equal to how much? Two by seven. Two by seven. Two by seven. Yeah. What is remaining? Four remaining by five. Cake? Four by five. No, no, no. After no, no. Ravi eats uh, two seventh, right? Now, what is remaining? From one minus two by seven. One by five. one minus two by seven. 
if supposing uh, two sevenths of the class have not done the homework, then how, how, what portion of the class has done the homework? One minus two by seven. See, in uh, when when we work with fractions, the total is one. When you work with percentages, the total is hundred. Hundred percent. When you're working with fractions, the total is one. So if Ravi eats two sevens, the remaining portion will be one minus two by seven. That will be the remaining portion. One minus two by seven will be the remaining portion. So one minus two by seven is equal to you can write one, one by seven, seven by seven. You can write one as seven by seven because seven by seven is one. So seven by seven minus two by seven. So it is seven minus two by seven, which is five by seven. Oh. Five by seven. This is remaining. After Ravi eats, how much of the cake is remaining? Five seven is remaining. See here. Take a cake divided to seven seven equal parts. One two three four five six seven. Ravi eats this much. So what is the Ma'am, as I told the last answer that fill in the blank answer, not this answer. Sorry. So what is remaining? Five by seven is remaining. This much Ravi eats. So how much is remaining? One, two, three, four, five. Five by seven is remaining. So it is one minus two by seven. Five by seven. Now. His brother eats four fifth of the remaining part. So brother, brother eats four fifths of the remaining part. Is given. This is given. Brother eats. Ravi's brother. Okay. Ravi's brother. This right. Oh, this already better than Ravi's brother eats four fifth of the remaining part. So that means he eats how much? Four by five off means into the remainder that is five by seven. It's given there. See, we are not taking any effort, we're just taking that little effort to read what is given. Brother eats how much? Four fifths of the remaining part. Four fifths of the remaining part. So write four by five as it is. Off means into. Off stands for multiplication. And remaining part. What is the remaining part? Five by seven. Just put that. Replace the words with the relevant numbers or uh, you know uh, operations. Off the word off is replaced with the multiplication symbol. And the words the remaining part. Is replaced with five by seven because that is the remaining part. That's the remaining part. Yes, ma'am. How do you simplify? Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Four by seven. Now, how much is remaining? See, supposing there were ten chocolates, somebody eats three. What is remaining? Seven. And now somebody eats four. What is remaining? Three. So, like that, what was remaining earlier? How much was there? Originally there was one. Then Ravi eats two by seven. Originally there was one. Then Ravi eats two by seven. So now what is remaining? Five by seven. Now this only is there. Five by seven is only remaining now. One is gone. Because in one, two by seven, Ravi eats. So how much is remaining? Five by seven. Now in this remaining five by seven, how much does Ravi's brother eat? 
4 by 7. 5 by 7 was remaining. In that 4 by 7, Ravi's brother eats. Sir. So 5 by 7 was only remaining. And Ravi's brother eats 4 by 7. So now how much is remaining? 1 by 7. Yes, ma'am. 1 by 7. Yes. See, first there, first there was 1. Now, of this 1, Ravi eats 2 by 7. So what was remaining? 5 by 7. Now, of this remainder 5 by 7, his brother eats 4 by 7. 5 by 7 is now there. But his brother eats 4 by 7. Now what is the remainder? 5 by 7 minus 4 by 7, which is 1 by 7. Yes, ma'am. I got the same answer. Okay, ma'am. There was one. Ravi eats 2 by 7. After Ravi eats, the remainder is 5 by 7. Now this is only remaining. Now Ravi's brother eats. How much? 4 by 7. From which one he will he eat 4 by 7? From whatever is remaining only he can eat. No, 1 is not there now. 1 is gone. In 1, 2 by 7 is gone and now remainder is only 5 by 7. Now from this remainder 5 by 7, his brother eats 4 by 7. So now what's the remainder? 5 by 7 which was remaining minus what his brother eats? 4 by 7. So the remainder is 5 by 7 minus 4 by 7 which is 1 by 7. So remainder is remainder is equal to cake left cake left is equal to five by seven only was left after Ravi ate minus now his brother eats four by seven so the remainder is five minus four by seven which is one by seven this is the remainder. Yes, ma'am. Very good. All right, children. Uh, we were not. We are not able to finish. Uh, you know, all of uh, them in this class. We still have to discuss uh, true or false and uh, match the columns. We'll do that in the next session, next week. But uh, I'll just share the answers to. The other homework, which I think I gave on Tuesday. OK, yes, yeah, just five yeah. minutes. We'll see that and we'll wind up the session for today. Yeah. OK, ma'am. Just tell me the questions, no? Uh, was it of addition? Addition, yes, subtraction? Yes, ma'am. Addition and fraction and subtraction. Yes, ma'am. Just see if it is if this yes, is the question. Is this the first one? Is this the first one? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Ah, no, among the homework, is this the first one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So please check your. So I have nothing to explain here, children. You know this well. Check your answer. And if you got this right. Um, I got it right. Is this very good? I mean, I got it right. Very good. Deep thing, Tanya. Who else? Right, ma'am. Satachi, all of you. Santosh and uh, Ranava. Good. Yeah. Is this the next one? No, I don't remember yes. the questions I gave. That's why I'm asking this, you. This, this, is next one. this is next one. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, please check. Answer. Got it right? Okay. If you're right, even I'm right. Even I have to check my answer. So I'm yes, right. I can put tick mark with pencil, right? Yeah, yeah, please. So that you know we have checked the answers. Mom, the next one was Rohit ate four by seven parts of an apple. That one. Yeah, this one, please tell me. All of you got it right? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes. Okay. 
this i think we already discussed in the class right yes yes ma'am yeah. yes. i think santosh or somebody told me rohit had one seventh part of the apple mode that part i didn't write so somebody insisted that i should write part yes, so i remember I that day yeah. i only thought yes that yeah yeah so i remember we already had, uh, understood this answer yeah yes, this ma one is this homework yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma Yeah, please check. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, this one also we did it in class. Oh, this was done in class, is it? Okay. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. We... This one you did it in class for us. Okay, then this and one. And this one, ma'am, you only have the required number. No, this one is not done. This homework, ah? Huh? Yes, ma'am, but it was not done in class. When you send the pictures. Mm -hmm. You only wrote required number. You didn't write. Oh yeah, that. I think I wrote only the first line. I wrote only yes. that required number for this. Correct, correct. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You wrote only the required number. Yeah. And I was the same one. Yeah. So you're all now in seventh standard. So you need to be more responsible. If you have not completed, see, I, I'm sharing. I've shared all the images on WhatsApp. Whatever we've discussed so far. So you have everything with you. If you have not completed, please finish your work. Okay, ma'am. Anything more we have to discuss? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's all. That's all homework. Yes, ma'am. That's all. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right, children. So that's it for today's session, and uh, that's all. Uh, uh, you know about the classes for this week. We'll meet next week, regular class Friday, six to eight. Okay, so at the center only, no one. At the center, yes, at the center. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, children. Okay. Thank you so much. You may leave the call. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, children. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Yes, Deepthi. Come on, that.